You know what? Fuck the way I'm doing this right now. Give me a minute. Let's see. What's up, guys? Uh, so, I've been sick for a couple days, and as you've probably seen, there is absolutely no progress on the S14. Uh, we've been completely swamped with customer cars here at the shop. Um, I'm trying to get some minutes in to work on the car, but literally, the shop is just, uh, if you see behind me, the shop is just, like, packed with vehicles, so I can't physically get the S14 in here. Like, there's just physically not enough space for it to come inside. So, I have done no work on the chassis, but I have been working on the motor, so I guess it's time to, uh, reveal what we're going with here. So, da 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 There, you can see it right there. Oh, there it is. basically to the short block. Uh, I was, you know, looking things over. Uh, I think I should look things over a little bit more. I see a couple things that it needs, but in general, uh, it seems okay. The pistons look fine, the cylinder walls look fine. This chain, uh, the front timing chain here, I think has been stretched a little bit over time. Uh, this is just the grimiest, just the grimiest motor. Uh, imaginable. I mean, look, look, look at that. Um, so this thing needs a lot of cleaning, just a ton of cleaning. And uh, that won't be that bad, but you know, it's gonna, it's gonna take a day just to clean everything. Um, I just spent about, I would say it's about two hours breaking it down to this, maybe a little bit less, an hour and a half breaking it down to this. And uh, you know, it was very, uh, very simple. Nothing to, uh, nothing fighting me too much. But uh, it definitely, it, it, it needs a lot of cleaning. Now I'm gonna have to clean up the area that I have uh, completely wrecked with tools and parts, and then uh, I'll get back to it tomorrow. I do have to order a couple things to uh, make this work. So depending on how long it takes for those to get here, this will. Uh, go together quickly or slowly, but my mission for tomorrow will be to clean this whole thing up, uh, like really clean it, it'd be very clean, this and the heads, clean everything, and then um, paint it. So it's an iron block, I wanna paint it. If it was an aluminum block, I'd probably just leave it raw. But because it's an iron block, I wanna paint it and uh, make it look all fancy, so. Uh, luckily enough, most of the components seem like they're in good shape, just absolutely filthy. So, now I gotta get to cleaning other stuff. Basically, I've tried a few things already, like chemical cleaning, uh, we have a parts washer that's full of diesel, 
that didn't clean the stuff off. So basically what I've determined is that I'm gonna media blast most things in our blast cabinet. Um, a fine example of this is, this is the power steering pulley. It is uh, pretty gross looking, as you can tell, but I media blasted the back and it is in perfect condition. So I'm basically gonna do that with almost every part of this thing. So uh, I don't know if I'm gonna bore you with that footage exactly, maybe a little bit of it, but that's the deal. So I'm gonna scrape and degrease this motor and then just blast every component that I can. <laughs> I have to decide if I want to um, I have to decide if I want to drill holes in the lifter buckets I think that I do uh, the lifter buckets are right here sometimes referred to as lifter trays lifter retainers that sort of thing so it's common to drill a half inch hole in them well four half inch holes in them uh, for oil to drain now it's not necessary on a streetcar for the most part, but the hearsay is anything that uh, sustains high RPM, the oil in the lifter trays will aerate, so you want to drain it. So we're gonna drill the holes. It's my first time drilling holes in retainers, so we'll see what happens. Okay, got the holes drilled. Um, it was actually a little more difficult than I thought it would be. Uh, it helps to use a pilot bit so that it, it really holds in place. But uh, yeah, there you go. So I have three more of these to do. Hopefully I don't break any. And uh, definitely, I don't know if you can see there, but it gets crudded up with plastic inside too. So definitely uh, rinse these out when it's all said and done. This is what the lifter buckets look like with their holes in them. deal people um, this is th this motor is an iron block that came with iron heads and I didn't want iron heads I wanted the aluminum heads they are lighter they're better um, so I got these ones on Facebook for, for uh, $150 
so uh, a few of you are probably wondering why I decided to go with the LS based motor what we actually have down there is an LQ4 this LQ4 is uh, a 6 liter iron block engine now when I got it it was iron block iron head with a blown head gasket and a uh, roughed up crank so as you can probably guess the motor was free a free motor is kind of hard to argue with uh, especially a 6 liter uh, you know Chevy motor like it's it's pretty good so and I knew I could fix it you know it's not it's like not a big deal so I got a free motor and I kind of got it with like a trade of a, of a car chassis and stuff like that so it was just kind of thrown in because of whatever so you know free motor that's the deal it's an LQ4 which means that it's a low compression uh, truck motor it had iron heads I switched those out for aluminum LQ9 heads I think it's a 317 is the uh, is the serial number on the heads I think it's 317 they're aluminum they're the same otherwise though they're just a little bit updated LQ9 heads I also have uh, multi-layer steel LQ9 head gaskets in there and what else here I have, I have a list here on the phone uh, I can tell you what I've put into that motor the, the, the free motor I'll tell you what I put into it and what that costs basically so I have ICT billet truck accessory brackets now I did that because I wanted to keep the truck accessories uh, but also you know needed to have them relocated without the huge bracketry that a truck has because I still wanted to use an LS1 intake manifold fuel rails and throttle body which also came with the LQ4 motor um, I have ICT coil uh, brackets I literally just did those because they look better that that was really it the factory LQ4 brackets are fine but I wanted the the nicer looking brackets um, I put on an F body water pump with three quarter inch water pump spacers the F body water pump is to better align the uh, hoses for the radiator I didn't want the truck one where it sticks out of the top I, I just don't like that and it would have been interfering with the throttle body the three quarter inch spacers are so that it maintains alignment with truck accessories I have a GM and Felpro full gasket kit I replaced literally every single gasket on the motor there's not a single gasket from uh, 2000 I think is when the motors from so there's not a single factory gasket left it's all brand new gaskets I have ARP head studs, ARP rod bolts, and an ARP harmonic balancer bolt. I put those in there as well as the multi-layer steel head gasket because the engine was going to be boosted. You probably noticed by a few of the parts that you've seen so far that it looked like I was leaning towards boost. That's because I was. I was going to do a turbo V8, but I've decided against that since then just because of complexity and expense and that sort of thing. I put a new crank in it. It needed a new crank, so I put a new crank in. Um, it has AMS Racing main bearings and AMS Racing rod bearings. Uh, I put those in when I put the crank in because if you're replacing the crank, you might as well replace your main bearings and your rod bearings. You're already in there. You might as well do it. Um, I put a new alternator on there. It didn't need a new alternator or something like that. I could have used the truck one, except I literally broke it. So, like, I physically broke the alternator, so I just needed to get a replacement. Um, I have an updated oil gallery barbell. There was an old design that was prone to breaking and people would lose oil pressure. And then GM updated the design, so I have the updated one in there. I put in the updated one. I have GM Performance valve springs that are good to 570 lift. That's what you saw those blue springs. They're good to a 570 lift. Uh, I put those in because I put in an LSX store hot cam, which uh, the stats on that is it's a 218, 227, 525, 525 with a 112 degree lobe separation. That's a pretty modest camshaft. That's, that's nothing special. It's almost a factory LS2 cam. So nothing fancy. Uh, but it will help over that factory truck cam, which is terrible. So all of that put together on this free motor is uh, $1,469.25. So $1,500 basically is, you know, $1,400, $1,500 is what a free motor costs. But to be fair, at the end of the day, it is much better and much stronger than a stock motor that would cost you that much or more. 
So iron block, aluminum head, ARP everywhere I could stuff it. Uh, I think it looks good, you know, with the ICT brackets, I think it looks very nice. And I kind of want it to look nice in the engine bay. I still have to clean up the throttle body, the fuel rails, and the intake manifold to really complete the look. But that's just about it. So that is the way the motor currently sits. As far as a swap kit goes, I'm going to use uh, the Funkmo, the Function Motorsports, uh, what I guess you would call a prototype swap kit. Uh, it's going to be kind of the prototype of it. So basically it's a swap kit that we make in-house. We're going to try to produce it. So, uh, you know, to be a budget-oriented kit that also functions well. And we will find out on this car if it does that, but it will. What's the other thing? That's, that's pretty much it for the motor. Uh, there's a bunch of fuel things and stuff that I'll explain when we're actually doing the fuel setup, like fittings and things like that. But all in all, I think it's probably going to produce around 330 horsepower at the wheel, which isn't anything special, but it's a good start. And if I do decide to boost it, you know, do any kind of forced induction, whether mechanical or chemical down the line, uh, it will be very ready to handle that. That is going to make it a very good motor going forward. Uh, I think it'll be reliable day in and day out, like most of the GM stuff is. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So I will get back to you guys when I can actually start working on this chassis or if I have any other updates on the motor, drivetrain, suspension, just anything. I'll keep you guys updated. All right. Thanks a lot.